The Ducks and Flames just about set to get started at Scotiabank Saddledome. The first of five meetings this season between these two clubs. And the first of a two-game Western Road swing that will conclude on Thursday for Anaheim in Vancouver. These teams separated by just two points in the standings and a regulation win tonight for the Flames and they would be atop the Pacific Division at the end of the night's festivities. Now we go down to ice level and listen in on the singing of tonight's national anthems. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say star-spangled banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave o oh, We see thee rise, the true north, strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Just about set to go at Scotiabank Saddle Dome. Time for tonight's Honda Keys to the Game. And for those, we go to the Anaheim. Bench are Julie Stewart Bink standing by with Trent Yanni. Thank you so much, Johnny. Trent, 39 of Calgary's 59 goals have come at even strength. How do you combat their prowess five on five? Well, we got to keep them in their own zone. Their D are a big part of that, and they're in the rush a lot, so we got to limit turnovers in the neutral zone and make their D turn a little bit tonight. Thanks, Trent. Good luck in the game. You bet. Thank you. Johnny, back to you. Thank you, Julie. That Calgary D a little depleted tonight. Brian Hayward, we get late word that Chris Russell will not be in Bob Hartley's lineup. And he's one of the scooters back on the blue line and playing exceptionally well. They will miss him uh, coming into the lineup. Rafael Diaz, another smallish defenseman, not afraid to join the attack, but maybe not quite as gifted a skater as Chris Russell is. The referees for tonight's game are Graham Skilleter and Brad Meyer. The linesmen are Andy McElman and Michelle Cormier. And we're underway. The Ducks in their road whites. And Lindholm throws it into the Calgary zone off the stick of Kessler. Hiller lays the stick down to get a piece of it. Jonas Hiller has defeated every team in the National Hockey League except two, the Toronto Maple Leafs and these Anaheim Ducks. This is the first time, obviously, he's ever played against them. The home run pass through the middle of the ice misses Yuri Hoodler. So icing is the result. We've talked about the Ducks injury bugs. Well, the Flames are not immune. And the story with Calgary, and I heard you in the pregame show talking to Kelly Rudy, uh, the Flames color analyst, and he pointed out the fact that Stajan, Backlund, Colburn, three 
three centers. And that is the real opportunity tonight for the likes of Ryan Getzloff and Ryan Kessler. The middle of the ice is an area that the Ducks should be able to dominate. Johnny Goudreau can't clear past Fowler off the faceoff. The Flames were dead last in the league in the faceoff circle a year ago. They're next to last coming into tonight. Here's room for Goudreau, and the young man they call Johnny Hockey rips it high and wide. Well, Johnny Hockey is a pretty shifty little player, and he can do some things on skates that uh, will surprise you at times. They list him at 5'9", 150, which means he might be 5'7", probably a buck 40. <laughs> exactly. He's a little wee guy out there, but uh, he comes with a pretty interesting resume, of course, the college player of the year last season in U.S. college hockey. Here's Corey Perry, and Hiller turns him away. He chops his own rebound right back to the front of the Calgary net. And Hiller is true to that. Johnny Goudreau won the Hobie Baker last year, as Brian mentioned, the top player in college hockey at Boston College. He was a two-time All-American there, and he has really burst onto the scene here in Calgary. He got off to a slower start, but has really picked it up as of late. Seems to be figuring out how a small player like him can stay out of the high traffic areas and use that speed effectively. Brian, he's a good defensive player. He's one of the league leaders in takeaways coming into tonight's action, and he's the second leading scorer amongst rookies in the National Hockey League as well. This Flames team in general, not the biggest team the Ducks are going to see this season, not just on the back line. They've got Paul Byron and Yuri Hoodler, amongst others, up front in their forward core. So Anaheim does not expect to be pushed around by this team, and perhaps their physical advantages could work for them. Here's a shot by Monahan, just wide as the Ducks failed to get the puck out of the zone. It's another wonderful-looking young player. First round draft pick from last spring, or not last spring, I should say, spring of 2013. And Anderson forced to make the save a couple of times. Oh, and the rebound just out of the reach as it came right back for Brendan Bolick, but he couldn't get the handle on it. It all started with a bad turnover inside the duck zone. It leads directly to three shots on goal for the Flames and one pretty darn good scoring chance. Ricard Raquel able to clear the zone, and as the Flames retreat through the neutral zone, Anaheim getting changes. Ladislav Schmid rims it hard around into the Anaheim zone. Schmid originally a Ducks first-round pick back in 2004. Puck not held in at the line as it's fired wide and offside is the call. We were keeping an eye on Frederick Anderson. Bruce Boudreau says he wanted to see some sharp looking saves and some Christmas crispness to his game early on and uh, I think he got that on that little sequence right there by Freddie <laughs> looks alert good head movement trying to locate the puck around bodies puck sent in off a face-off win by the flames in the neutral zone Josh Manson tries to dig it off the wall gets it ahead Tim Jackman the former flame can't clear past Hoodler and he passes it out of the reach of Grandlin. Raquel on the backhand up the boards and it's Jackman who has it knocked off his stick and Grandlin will bring it back with him to the neutral zone. Three minutes gone, no score in Calgary. Goudreau brings it across the line but behind the play, mixing it up, Derek Englund the defenseman and Tim Jackman. Englund's a big man and Jackman just thrusts him to the ice, throws a couple of uppercuts before the linesman intervened. Tim Jackman is a former Calgary Flame. And uh, he wanted to, I think, make it known pretty early on that he was interested in exchanging how do you do's with Derek England. England's a pretty tough customer. And he got the first couple in. Jackman just able to avoid a couple of good right hands. At the end of this, when England goes down, Tim Jackman didn't hold back, landed a couple of pretty good pops. England came over as an unrestricted free agent from the Pittsburgh Penguins, signed a three-year deal. They're tacking on an extra two here to Tim Jackman. I, I can, I, I, it'll be interesting to hear whether this was for, you know, initiating the altercation or whether it was for continuing to throw punches while England was down on the ice. I'm curious whether they may have called it for a cross-check to initiate that altercation. 
But the Calgary power play gets the first chance. Top 10 in the league at 22% are the Flames. But it's a key face-off win for Anaheim that enables the puck to be iced as Kessler was able to control the draw. One thing Freddie Anderson is going to have to be very alert about, uh, boy, the, the, the boards here are so quick. Shots that go just wide of the net seem to bounce right back in front of the goal. It's a huge asset for power plays, I believe. Monaghan takes it all the way below the goal line and rims it around. Martin Giordano points in nine straight games, the leading scoring defenseman in the entire NHL. He has it again. Giordano and Brody work the blue line. It's a wrist shot from Giordano blocked by Kessler. Came back to the Flames defenseman. He has it again. Looks up. Wrist shot blocked again by Kessler. And he'll give chase. It's a foot race between he and Mark Giordano. Kessler tries to protect the puck and keep it alive. But he can't find Cogliano who is knifing into the zone. Now, great job by Kessler in that shooting lane. Not once but twice blocking the bids by Giordano. The Flames lead the league in blocked shots, but it's Anaheim getting in the way early. A minute gone in the penalty to Jackman. And the Flames' second power play unit starts back out. Cross-ice pass a little behind Yuri Hoogler. He was the leading scorer for the Flames a season ago, and he rockets it in. Juris, the rookie, chips it ahead. Silverberg on his backhand trying to move it up the wall. Will held in by Weidman, who one times it wide of everything. Pretty nice when you can put Dennis Weidman on your second power play unit. A few years back, three years ago, he led all defensemen in the NHL in power play goals. Now it's Juris, the rookie out of Union College, bumped down. Followed up, though, and into the middle, it's Fugler and Juris with a little two-man game. Nobody wanted to shoot the puck. Fowler intercepts behind the net. Didn't get a lot on it, however, and Weidman will be able to keep it in. Got it to the net. Tipped by Juris just wide. Final 10 seconds of the penalty. Cogliano doesn't clear. Well, he's just playing with fire here. Uh, penalty killers giving him a second opportunities. Paul Mary was serving the additional minor out of the box and the Ducks full strength. He'll bring it into the Calgary zone and rock it one off the leg of Diaz. Diaz was signed after the season began as an unrestricted free agent. And he's been a healthy scratch the last few games. Kessler just tries to touch it back, and Manson covers his point in a hurry. Paul Mary curls from out of the corner, got it to the net kick save by Hiller. In his traditional spot on his knees, still able to flash that left leg out. Here's a rebound for Bolesky as Manson got it to the net, and Hiller got just enough. Yeah, this is where you make them play. Down low in the defensive zone where you can body this smallish Calgary defense off of the puck. Pretty good sequence for Jonas Hiller. He gets away with one as he leaves a rebound lying around the front. Bolesky gets to it. I don't know if that caught the arm of the goaltender or a little bit of the post. Good work from Kessler on that block. And he says, oh, for good measure, I might as well block another. Face off to the right of Hiller. Controlled by Sean Monahan. He's the best face-off man for these Flames. At just over 51%, the second-year man. Monahan still just 20 years of age, and he just turned 20 years of age. Here's T.J. Brody, the defenseman, leading the rush into the Anaheim zone. And don't be surprised by that. We could see that a lot tonight. You are going to hear that an awful lot. Uh, Bob Hartley was talking about a three-on-two last game. And two of the players were defensemen up leading the three on two for the Flames. So he said he wants him to go, Brian, and they seem to be embracing that opportunity and that particular style. Getzloff tried to shovel it out. It was tipped away. Now he follows up in the neutral zone, and he runs right into Corey Perry. Getzloff, who played his junior hockey here with the Calgary Hitmen, follows up as the Ducks go for a change behind the play. 13-15 to go in a scoreless first period. Brody measures things. He's the fourth leading scoring defenseman in the entire National Hockey League as well. But it's Giordano who's getting all the headlines here in Calgary, and deservedly so. Pass ahead by Votten and doesn't find its intended target. Raquel Thompson tries again from behind the net. Maroon kicks it back and finds Votnin. Good support ahead for Raquel. Oh, he had Thompson knifing down the middle over Lennon. Thompson from a bad angle just rifles it wide. Votnin holds the zone. Wide open is his partner, Brian Allen. His drive is blocked. Brought back to center ice and fired in by Brian McGratton and easily blocked away by Anderson as the rest of the Flames change. Ducks turn it over, but Calgary would have been offside. 
as Berchi had to pull up at the blue line. Ducks trying to finish changes, and Allen nearly crossed up Botman, but he gets it ahead for Bolesky. Kessler rims it around down low. Weidman trying to get away from Bolesky, but Paul Mary is there. Keeps it deep. Schmid on his horse gets to it, winds it around, held in at the point. Fowler tried to play it ahead, but Josh Juris able to break that up. Berchi gets chased the other way. Flames got to be careful. They were in mid-change. They couldn't play that puck for fear of having too many men on the ice. Paul Mary keeps it in for Kessler. Kessler to the front of the net. Trying to go short side. Hiller makes the save and covers up. And a good stop by Jonas Hiller and well played by the Calgary defense. Preventing Ryan Kessler from dragging that puck into a better shooting angle was Weidman who hit the deck and really helped out his goaltender. Practice yesterday as Francois Boschman returned to the ice for a full practice with his teammates for the first time. He'd been skating a little bit on his own, about 20 minutes at a time, following the same progression that Corey Perry went through as he recovered from the mumps. Uh, Boschman, I, I'll be shocked if he doesn't play in Vancouver, but Lovejoy, District, Gibson, Heatley, on and on and on. Uh, so many players out of the Ducks lineup. Third straight game without Devontae smith Pelly as well. He is also on the trip with the Ducks and perhaps a possibility for Thursday. Bruce Boudreaux talking to the media this morning said Francois Beauchemin wants to play tonight. He said, but that doesn't mean he gets to play. He said he would have come out of the hospital bed to play <laughs> three games ago. That's just the way Francois is. Yeah, but he, he said that just because he wants to play doesn't mean he gets to. If you ask the player, he's just going to tell you, I feel great. Fowler unable to keep it in at the line, so the Ducks forced to get onside. And just a little touch at the blue line will enable a change as Anaheim in a scoreless draw with the Flames nine minutes in at the Scotiabank Saddledome. Calgary's won 14 of the last 20 meetings between these two teams here. And Honda Center's been a house of horrors for them. I don't think they've won in Anaheim in a decade. Silverberg mishandles the pass but stays onside and gains the zone. Cogliano sealed off behind the net by Granlin but gets it back. Marcus Granlin stays with him there and now Thompson got inside on Schmid. Nate Thompson curls on his backhand into the middle. His shot denied. Silverberg has it back. And another bid blocked as Schmid got in the way. Thompson moves it along. Cogliano trying to spin away from Engelin. Silverberg is there. Good puck support down low from this line. The cycle finally broken up as Granlin intercepts and angles it but didn't get it out of the zone. Thompson finds Manson jumping into the play and the pass went right through him. Ducks keep it in. Cogliano again for Silverberg from a bad angle off the side of the net. Anaheim getting a defensive change while they keep the puck in the zone. And Brian Allen taps it back. Cogliano touches it so it's offside. Just past the halfway mark of the opening period in Calgary. Still seeking the game's first goal. Well, there's young Josh Manson who grew up just eight hours away in Prince Albert. And he told me today that his family chartered a bus. 30 friends and family, including his parents, here in attendance tonight at the Scotiabank Saddledome to see him for the first time play an NHL game. For Manson, just his eighth NHL game. I remember his dad missed his first one, Brian, because he was the interim coach of the Prince Albert Raiders of the Western League. He's back to being an assistant coach again, he tells me. But he said so many people wanted to come. That dad just said, let's get a bus. We'll spend the night after the game. And he had to miss practice, one practice for the Raiders, but he'll be back behind the bench after they return. Well, Josh has been a very pleasant surprise uh, for the Ducks. I mean, he looks... Pretty comfortable and right yeah. at home. I was talking to him this morning. He said, you know, game by game, I'm starting to notice little things that, that make playing in this league a little bit easier. And I, I asked him, have, have you reached the point where you step on the ice and you can look across and say, oh boy, that's Curtis Glencross. He's a four checker. I need to make sure I move the puck quickly when Glencross is on the ice. He goes, I'm, I'm not there yet. But he goes, the guys in the locker room are doing a great job passing along little tidbits of information to me about the individual skill sets that players bring to the table every night. He picked up his first NHL point in the loss to Florida on Sunday as he assisted on the Andrew Cogliano goal. 
And he was also a plus two in that game that was otherwise very forgettable from an Anaheim standpoint. To win a 2015 Honda CRV on Fan Appreciation Night this year at Honda Center, send us a 15-second video telling us why you deserve the car. It's AnaheimDucks.com backslash I want my CRV. Off the icing call against Anaheim, the draw back to the right of Frederick Anderson. Josh Juris, who wears 86 for the Flames to oppose Ryan Kessler. Juris already with four goals in just 12 games. In this, his first NHL season after spending all year last year playing in Abbotsford in the American League. A hard working player. The, the Flames have added you know, some young depth that have speed, John. When you, when you look at some of their call-ups, there's not a lot of sides into their lineup, but they, they certainly have some speed. And the, you know, Bob Hartley is your coach. The work ethic is there as well. If you're going to get on the ice with Hartley, you, know, you better not get out work too many shifts. I was uh, I was marveling at his morning skate this morning, Brian. It was it was very up tempo, high intensity, and they weren't just passive drills. They were they were working on three on threes that turned into four on fours that turned into five on fives, and then full on power play drills. Uh, not what we're accustomed to seeing at a lot of NHL morning skates. Bob Hartley's contract expires at the end of this season, and I got to imagine that the Flames are looking to lock him up here in the near future because uh, he would be a coach that would be on a lot of people's radar, I think, should he become an unrestricted free agent. He won a Stanley Cup with the Colorado Avalanche, so the pedigree is there. Giordano gets one through off the faceoff, and Anderson true to that test. You know, you know it's not just that, John. I, I think Hartley genuinely is one of the coaches who has grown with the game and, and has changed the way that he coaches. And you, you did not see his defense in Colorado being active, or in Atlanta for that matter, the way that this Flames defense is. This is the new NHL. It hardly seems to be a real good fit for the new NHL. Monahan can't get the pass from Setaguchi behind the net. Devin Setaguchi, longtime San Jose Shark, who came over from Winnipeg as an unrestricted free agent in the offseason, getting back in the lineup tonight. He's been a disappointment, still without a point through 10 games, but he's on the top line tonight with Glenn Cross and Monahan. So a good opportunity for Setaguchi to rekindle those offensive scoring instincts. He had some big years. In San Jose, did Setaguchi had a 31 goal campaign five years ago with the Sharks at 65 points, but all of a sudden the offense is waning. And he's got a score because he's never been known as a great defensive player. Yeah, so minus seven already this yeah, year. If uh, Devin Setaguchi's not putting points up, it's going to be tough for him to stay in the lineup. Icing call against the Flames and a face-off win for Anaheim, but they can't get a shot to the net. Here's Goudreau speeding the other way. Hooks it across off the heel of the stick of Hoodler. Good stop. Good stop on the attempted wraparound by Goudreau. Flames again get possession, and Goudreau throws it back to the line, but he splits the defense, and England is back after it. One of the best chances of the hockey game. England's pass was touched, so no icing, and Anderson doesn't touch it behind the net. So a little duress for Manson. He moves it. Thompson is there. Cogliano tied up by Brian McGratton, who definitely wins the tail of the tape there, but he's able to shovel it out of the zone. Silverberg kicks it into the Calgary end, curls it to the corner. Thompson pinned to the boards there by England. Cogliano after it to the near side. Andrew had one of the two Anaheim goals Sunday in the loss against Florida, but he can't get the puck off the boards there. Flames will get changes as Diaz bounces it in. Around the boards, Allen can't get a handle on the bouncing puck. And the Flames keep the cycle going. Brian McGratton put it behind the net. Botman bumped there by Lance Boma. Boma gets it back, and his centering pass finds no one and will go 200 feet the other way. Well, both coaches seem quite content to go fourth line against fourth line. And then there's some beef on those fourth lines. I mean, Boma, Bolig, pretty big guy. Certainly Jackman and Maroon, pretty big guys as well. Nice work by Votman off the end boards and space up the wing. Corey Perry busts into the Calgary zone, tried to come to the middle. Maroon follows up, finds Getzloff. He shovels it to the front of the net, and that's off the leg of Brody. On the back check, Getzloff steals it back and off the stick of Perry back into the Calgary zone. Six minutes to go, opening period, no score. 
The Ducks out shooting the Flames six and four as Fowler's back to get it. Releases on the puck behind the net to get away from Glenn Cross. Finds Getzloff, makes a move into the Calgary zone, draped by four defenders, and it was knocked off his stick. Edom couldn't get the handle, but Perry keeps it alive. Giordano knocks it down and scales it up the glass and back out, forcing a foot race into the Anaheim zone. Stoner gets to it first. Fowler, nice pass across, and Perry with time. Into the middle of the ice for Emerson Edom. Edom, three points in the last two games, pursues to the corner. Monahan chopped it away from him. Weidman, oh, a dangerous cross-ice pass. It'll be kept in by Paul Mary. He winds and fires. That broke his stick as it went wide on the short side, and it's just hoisted all the way back. Not far enough for icing as Lindholm is there to get it, and the Flames use the opportunity to change. Campus gets center red, uses the glass, gets it deep, and goes after it. He got around Schmid, who gets away with a hole as he hooked him, and Manson did not keep it in at the point, so Anaheim will have to vacate. He just wrapped the arms right around Hampus Lindholm. Lindholm, that, that little self-chip play where you dump it off the boards and skate into, your, into it yourself is something I think he's added to the repertoire this season. Hoodler on the one-man four check, running a little rough shot. The Ducks finally able to stretch it, and off the stick of Silverberg, it trickles into the Calgary end. Engelin reverses it. Juris is there. Long time between whistles, and this stretch pass misses the intended target, Paul Byron, so it's an icing call with 4.20 remaining in the first. Now, Freddie Anderson's best sequence of the night happened just a few moments ago. It's a two-on-one break. Granlin goes to the far post, and I don't know if that puck ever gets to the stick blade, but then Goudreau with that quickness. Watch, the, watch him just jump in front of the goal line and try and stuff it in on the short side, well defended by the goaltender, Frederick Anderson. Nate Thompson won seven of nine draws against the Panthers on Sunday, now at 53% on the year, and he's in to take this draw. Juris, the rookie, is sent packing, but the referee skates over and says, nope, off an icing call, he's got to stay in there. And if he's called for an encroachment again, it would have been a penalty. Thompson wins it cleanly. Votnin slides it over for Allen. His wrist shot got through and a left pad save by Hiller. Cleared up the middle and Silverberg holds it in. Drops it back for Votnin. Makes one man miss. Scores! Sammy Votnin. Great patience of the Ducks. Strike first. Uh, I think this puck deflects off Rafael Diaz in front of Jonas Hiller. Judging by the reaction of the goaltender, I think Votnin shot touches something on Rude, ended up going right between the legs. A big goal for Sammy Votnin. Here's a good look at it from an angle in behind the net. And in comes the shot. Good fake by Votnin. Yeah, it's off the shaft of the stick of Diaz. And then it bounces directly down and through the wickets of Jonas Hiller. It'll be the fifth of the year for Votnin. See if Thompson got a touch on it as well. He may have. Either way, the Ducks have a 1-0 lead. As Hiller back to play it behind his own net. Dumped in offside by Brandon Bowling. And we will step aside. The Ducks have the game's first goal in Calgary. So it's goal number five on the season for Sammy Votnin. Uh, this is all about the fake. Look at the patience, head up, little pump fake right there. Calgary player slides right by him, and then Diaz moves out to challenge and just gets enough of a touch on that puck to change the direction right between the, the legs of the goaltender, Hiller. Six goals in 48 last season. He's already got five this year. A wonderful start to the year for Sammy. Jacob Silverberg will draw the lone assist at 15-54. Silverberg now with four points, plus five in his last six games. And Anaheim with a one-nothing lead. Lance Boma stumbles as he chips it into the Anaheim zone, and then Clayton Stoner deposits it in the Anaheim bench. Big Brian McGratton, former member of the Anaheim Ducks, was at camp. Uh, I thought Brian McGratton actually when he came to training camp, that was back in the days where the Ducks had George Perils. I really liked the camp of Brian McGratton. I, I told him that afterwards. He 
he went on uh, to greener pastures to find an NHL job. But uh, I thought he really kind of set the table for himself with the way he played for the Ducks in the preseason that year. McGratton, a wonderful story. This is his second tour of duty in Calgary. He went through the NHL substance abuse program now six years ago in 2008, and he is one of the spokespersons of that program and living and breathing example of how a player and a person, for that matter, can turn things around for the better. Setaguchi gets a touch at center, and right there on him was Hampus Lindholm. One of the things Coach Bruce Boudreau told us he would look for is to see how much space his team would give the Flames in all three zones here tonight. And that was an example with Lindholm right up on Setaguchi, giving no room at all. Manson with a bouncing puck. He settles, gets towards the net. That went off again off a Calgary player, and just why? You know, I mentioned that the Flames lead the league in block shots, but sometimes, Brian, you know as well as anybody, you can be your own worst enemy when you get pieces of shots. Goalies love their teammates to block shots as long as they get all of the puck. It's when they don't, when they only get a piece of it, you can look pretty darn silly. Pick up two tickets to three Ducks games when you get a Thanksgiving pack this season. The Ducks will also include an apron for the upcoming holiday for you. Go to AnaheimDucks.com slash Thanksgiving pack today. I guess we should clarify we're in Calgary. That's American Thanksgiving. Coming up on us in about nine days now. Or as some of us like to call it, food fest. <laughs> hey been training for the last few days what a, great what a great holiday when you think about it. It, it. It's all about eating. How can anyone not like Thanksgiving? Puck behind the Anaheim goal, reaching Allen, can't get a stick on it. Granlin does. Marcus Granlin, another of the diminutive forwards here in Calgary, and the puck dug out from underneath him by Bolesky, held at the line and then tipped just wide as it was thrown to the front of the net. And it's Goudreau. He's got a lot of energy, and he gets to a lot of loose pucks. He gives it to Hoodler, who tried to bank it up the wall, and Kessler blocks it and comes back with Paul Mary. Across the Calgary line, third man is Cogliano. Paul Mary shoots, tried to go short side. Hiller got the blocker on it. Yes, got a little piece of it. That was a good bit by Kyle Paul Mary, and Kessler starting to look for him a little bit. Hoodler the other way, forced wide by Stoner. Fowler had trouble getting it out of his skates, rolls it to the line. Brody held it in. Juris hit hard there by Stoner. The puck's still loose, and Sven Berchi is there. Again, the Flames keep it in. Silverberg trying to bump his man off the puck. It's Giordano down low, and his pass too hot to handle for Juris. Juris, Byron, and Berchi out there right now for Calgary, and they keep recovering pucks in the Anaheim zone. Under a minute to play in the period, a patient defensive effort from Anaheim, and Fowler finally gets to it. That was a good battle down low by Clayton Stoner. He, he just maintained his position, took advantage of his size advantage, and uh, as soon as the right Calgary player got a touch on the puck, he just buried him into the boards. Well, as an errant pass through center will be an icing call. Anaheim has done a good job defensively holding the Flames to just four shots on goal here in the first. Well, this was a difficult save right here, or near save. Actually, not a save at all, as it was uh, touched and just missed the far post. And here's Kyle Palmieri looking for his first of the season, trying to go top shelf blocker. Always thought that it's a, a much more difficult shot for a right-handed shooting goaltender when you're playing against a, a goalie that catches with his right hand like Hiller does, tough to hit that top corner over a blocker. It's easier over the catching glove. Final 20 seconds now of the opening period as Mark Giordano handles it. Giordano with 50 points in his last 55 games dating back to last season. Those are monumental numbers for a defenseman. Edom speeds through center, under 10 seconds to go in the period. Forced to his backhand, goes wide, tries to center, deflect it away. Glenn Cross didn't clear past Lindholm, who throws it to the net as the horn sounds, and the opening period is complete. Well, uh, certainly defensively, Anaheim played a whale of an opening 20 minutes, and, and I think that was the primary focus for the Ducks. After the debacle a couple of nights ago against the Florida Panthers, they needed to clean up their acts in the defensive zone. 
And Anderson not really tested, but made a couple of sharp-looking saves. So Boudreaux gets what he... Well, the Ducks in Calgary tonight, leading after one period of play at Scotiabank Saddle Dome by a count of 1-0 over the Flames. Tonight on Fox Sports Live, they've got all the highlights of a full day in the NBA and NHL. Fox Sports Live will feature Brady Quinn in studio. The latest college football playoff rankings are out. A big early day in college basketball. Number five, Kansas, and number one, Kentucky. Number 19, Michigan State, taking on number four, Duke. And John Calipari tells us what's better than a national title. Fox Sports Live tonight on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, Johnny, you were mentioning the fact that with uh, Sammy Botnan getting on the board today, that he is climbing the ladder amongst points leaders, among NHL defensemen. Giordano at the top with 21. Votnin with his fifth goal tonight. Now 14 points for Sammy, so great start to this regular season, the first season in which Sammy Votnin has been considered a regular part of the Anaheim defense, and of course a, now a, a fixture on the Ducks power play. His goal leaves him just one behind Giordano for the goal scoring lead amongst blue liners in the National Hockey League as well. As Anaheim makes their way out to begin the second period. Yeah, we should mention a word out of the general manager's meetings from uh, earlier today. They are going to change the way they conduct the overtime sessions. No more dry scrape prior to the overtime sessions. They will come out with shovels and do it in a much quicker fashion. They thought it was kind of a buzzkill, the amount of time that it was taking in order to complete the dry scrape before they started the overtime period. I, I like the adjustment. Bruce Boudreaux told us earlier in the week that the one thing he didn't like was how long the dry scrape was taking. We go down to the Anaheim bench. Our Julie Stewart Bink standing by with Ducks assistant coach Brad Lauer. Thank you so much, Brad. The Flames had eight giveaways in the first 20 minutes. Where are you guys successfully applying the pressure? Well, I think we wanted to get the puck in on the defenseman and take the body. And I think we made him uh, turn the puck over a few times and we were able to get back in on the offense. Thanks, Brad. Good luck in the second. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Julie. The Flames have been a third period team this year. They're Minus five now in the first period in goal differential, but in the third period, Brian, they're plus 13. Not something you often see from young hockey clubs. From the third period on, they've outscored their opponents in the early going this season, 26 to 12. Uh, Hartley is a guy that really emphasizes conditioning with, with his players. I mean, everyone does, but I mean, he really made a point at, at this morning's kind of medium scrum when talking about Mark Giordano and say, look, this guy is our captain. He's a leader of our team. He's the fittest guy we have in the locker room. And, and he's kind of bringing and dragging other players along uh, and encouraging them to take that same kind of approach. He's overtrained. He is so fit. And uh, he has just tremendous stamina. Giordano's just such a great story. Not drafted out of Owen Sound in the OHL. Now in his ninth NHL season, left after his first couple years at the NHL level and went and played in Russia and then came back and has just been on the upward climb ever since now, the captain here in Calgary. Kind of reinvented himself, improved his skating when he went over to Russia. Curtis Glenn Cross, originally signed as a free agent out of Alaska Anchorage by the Ducks. Bumped hard in the far corner there. That was back in 2004. Glenn Cross has had a couple of 20-goal campaigns since then. And has really found a home here in Calgary. Yeah, Glenn Cross is kind of one of those players that got away from the Ducks. As David McNabb scours the U.S. colleges so well. Anaheim has had so much success signing college free agents. We've seen more and more of it league-wide in the last six or seven years. Hoodler across the line to Granlund and an easy glove save for Frederick Anderson. And as players mix it up after the whistle, Brian, that was the kind of save I think you were talking about earlier that Bruce Boudreaux was looking for from his goaltender. Very confident looking stop. Absolutely. Uh, the crispness here from Freddie Anderson snaps the glove, makes it look easy, doesn't showboat. Granlund gives Cam Fowler a couple of extra shots. And uh, the Ducks did not have a big lineup on the ice, but uh, if Granlin wants to 
wants to administer those short little cross checks. You hope at some point that a message will be sent. Ducks took only two penalty minutes in the game on Sunday at Honda Center against the Florida Panthers. That was a season low. They've taken only two penalty minutes so far here tonight. Face-off controlled by the Flames. Blocker saved by Anderson as Giordano was able to step all the way to the dot. Getzloff's pass across goes off a body. And Edom able to drop down and poke it free for a moment. Got it back to Votnin. He'll try again. It has been a quiet night so far for the Getzloff Perry duo. Aaron outlet pass and Paul Byron keeps it in. Glenn Cross just out of his reach gets it off the boards. Giordano walks the line, throws it to the net. Wide on the short side, it comes out. Brody all the way below the hash marks to get to it. TJ Brody now in his fifth NHL season. Even a big five-year extension in October by the Flames who obviously want to hang on to him. His maturity and his development has been a huge step here in the last two years as Anaheim has called for icing. Well, and, and Brody, one of those players that just seems to have a, a great rapport with his defense partner, Giordano. And, and, and talking about the fitness level of Giordano, it, Hartley also mentioned the fact that, you know, Brody, because he's playing with Giordano all the time, has been forced to really improve his conditioning if he wants to play those types of minutes and play that style where they do have the green light every shift. And Brody got an 81 games last year, 31 points, and he's off and running this season offensively. You saw him amongst the defenseman leading scorers at the outset of the period here. Fowler forced to retreat, but he's able to get to a loose puck in the neutral zone. Stoner gives it to Ricard Raquel, and Setaguchi applies the four-checking pressure. Raquel off his skate, gets it into the Calgary zone. Hiller wanders out and sends it back up the glass. Kept in on the line by Stoner, and Maroon will get to it behind the net. Pat Maroon keeps it alive. Here's Ricard Raquel, steps in front, tries to stuff it on Hiller. Still loose and just out of his reach on the rebound. Setaguchi skates it away. Yeah, those types of plays are what the Ducks were not doing against the Florida Panthers. When you had a chance to bring the puck down and stuff it into the goal crease, Anaheim was looking for the pretty play and, and the perfect pass out into the slot area, which was not there ever against Florida. And sometimes you just got to adopt a little bit of a smash mouth approach to things, jam it into the crease, have people go into the net. Ducks two points ahead of the Flames in the Pacific Division standings coming into tonight with 26 points, now 11 4 and 4. Tonight's game marks the quarter pole of the season for both these teams. Game number 20 for both Calgary and Anaheim. Stoner dumps it in. Dug out of the corner. Palmieri centers looking for Bolesky. And Lindholm tried to jump in to keep it alive but couldn't get a stick on it. Manson chops it back in and around it goes. First man on it is Kessler. Dips his shoulder to protect the puck as he's hit by England. Silverberg got there but it was wiped away from him by Diaz. Kessler had it poked away as he tried to step in front. Lindholm all the way to the hash mark. Again for Silverberg down low. Protects the puck with his body on his backhand. Now turns on his forehand. Off the boards. Chips it in front. Oh, a juicy rebound. Just out of the reach of Matt Bolesky. Yeah, good idea by Silverberg. Just kind of throw it into an area where there was some traffic. Bolesky almost able to get a stick blade on it. A real good shift again by the Kessler line. They've been terrific in this game. Anglin angles it all the way down. They wave the icing for some reason. Must have been a deflection as Manson had the inside track on that puck. Thompson now supports him along the wall. And Manson able to turn and swat it away. Silverberg leads Cogliano into the Calgary zone. Giordano got good position on Cogliano. Silverberg is there to knock it away and it bounces over the skate of Nate Thompson. Hoodler away to center. Trailing the play, Brody, the defenseman, and his shot is blocked wide by Allen. Tripped up behind the net is Votnin, and the Ducks are going to get their first power play chance of the game. Well, there were four men on the rush, and the Flames could not get the shot through. And there's the block. It was actually Brian Allen with the block, and then Sammy Votnin up, and boy, it's that, it's that old skate between the feet. And as soon as the players sense that it is there, they just start taking a stride, and they're going to fall down automatically. So Anaheim gets their first power play chance of the night. 
without a power play goal in their last three games, and Getzloff wins the draw. Votnin gives it back to Fowler, who off his skate, barely keeps it in the zone. Now Monahan pressures short-handed, and following up is Lance Boma. This Calgary team will give you no quarter. Scored 12 short-handed goals a season ago to lead the league. Perry spins into the zone and angles it back for Fowler. Ian Votnin, again Fowler, fumbles it for a moment. Gets off trying to just get it to the net, and Brody blocked that. T.J. Brody pins it to the boards. Giordano comes over trying to dig at it. Maroon is there along with Getzloff. And back to the point, Fowler will hold the line. Walks it to the middle. Back to Getzloff, steps into the middle. Fires glove, save Hiller. Good stop by Hiller. No screen in front. And Jonas Hiller was able to look around Corey Perry and get a peek at that one. Good puck movement. Like to see Getzloff challenging. See Hiller? He's looking inside over the shoulder of Corey Perry and saw it all the way. Snares it with the right hand. And that was one of those things where if, if you can make the goaltender look to the other side of the body, and when you get set up in front, it makes life an awful lot more difficult for him. Hiller, third all-time in Anaheim history in games played, wins, and shutouts. Votnin sets up Kessler, and he misfired on the one-timer. Juris will ice the puck as Bolesky goes to get his stick. Boy, it was set up nicely. Votnin made the pass over, and Kessler just didn't make solid contact. Lindholm brings it the other way, and it's Paul Mary on his off wing in behind the Calgary net. Leaves it for Bolesky, will angle it to the point. Votnin walks it to the middle. Now hands it off, Kessler into the middle, tipped by Bolesky just wide. Lindholm below the circle to get to it. As Anaheim still with time on the power play, Votnin again for Kessler, back to Votnin, uses his skate to stop it. Lindholm has time. Votnin looks, trying to open up a shooting lane instead for Kessler, lets it go, missed on the short side. Lindholm will hold it in. 20 seconds of the power play. Right to the side of the net. Palmieri spins, saved by Hiller. Rebound batted out of midair after it was put to the net by Kessler. And I believe the referee just lost sight of it as he blows the play dead. I believe that you are correct. And that's too bad because the Ducks had great pressure. And with the faceoff, the penalty killers are going to be able to get organized. Good stop there on Palmieri and then the wraparound bit. I think he thinks that Jonas Hiller had that puck in his hand. And that's why he blew it dead. Quick little whistle, too bad. I, I like the way the Ducks attacked. Bolesky was there hacking away at the rebound. And a good piece of goaltending there by Jonas Hiller. Boy, the power play doesn't get rewarded, but they look sharp. Final seconds now of the man advantage as Calgary able to win the draw on ice. Will pretty much do it for the power play. Getzloff kicks it into the zone. Anaheim had two shots on goal on that power play, but they come up empty. Eat him in the corner. Monahan bumping him up the wall. Getzloff rifles it back for Stoner, threw it to the net. Blocked in the near circle. Getzloff, stick was tied up, but used his feet to keep the puck alive. Now Perry gets support from Edom. Back down low for Getzloff, and he gets inside on Giordano. Tries to feed it back to the line, but his stick was lifted. And Lance Boma angles it the other way. It's a good bump on Stoner. Puck was in his feet. Granlin moves it along. Boma from behind the net. Trying to get it in front for Monahan. That was broken up and Getzloff slips it up the near side. 12 minutes to go, second period. A thus far scoreless middle frame. Anaheim leads Calgary 1-0. The Flames with just six shots on goal in this game. Anaheim has forced Calgary to play in their own end here in the second period in particular. Josh Manson up the middle, finds Nate Thompson who lobs it in. Trying to get in on the four check is Silverberg and he does win the puck. Thompson trying to put it back behind it and intercepted by Dennis Weidman and he angles it to center ice. Yuri Hoodler sends it in and Anderson sets it up. Manson under a little bit of pressure takes a hit but got it ahead to Lindholm. Gloved down by Weidman in the neutral zone. For some reason, not a hand pass. So play on. Here's Cogliano on right wing, trying to throw it in front off the skate of Weidman to the corner. Dennis Weidman, an 11-year veteran, now with his sixth NHL team, turns it over as Silverberg gets on it on the near side. 
Goudreau can't handle it. Allen threw it to the net. That was blocked by Diaz. Now Goudreau throws it to center. Hoodler gets the legs moving. Diaz joins the rush. His bid partially blocked by Votman. Votman picks it up on the boards, chips it ahead, and it trickles into the Calgary zone. England forced to come over, and he takes a bump as he rims it hard around and out. Flames throw it in the middle, but turn it over. Quickly moved back the other way by Jackman. Maroon tries to set him back up in the Calgary zone. He drags it as far as the corner. Maroon is there. So good at protecting the puck in the corners. He does so and is able to nudge it to Jackman. Brings it in front of the backhand, and Hiller made the stop. A good try. Again, roll off the end boards, bring it into the crease. Paul Byron the other way. Cross ice pass. Sniffed out by Fowler. A good stick, and he bounces on it. Cam dumps it in as he takes a hit right in front of the Anaheim bench, and the rest of the mates will change. Paul Mary can't keep it in the zone as it came up the wall. Lindholm bounces it to center, and Kessler thought it went in the Anaheim bench. It did. So they blow the whistle. We're just past the halfway mark of the hockey game in Calgary. The Ducks have the only goal. Here's a good look at the captain, Ryan Ketzloff. Fun moment yesterday is former billet of Ryan Getzloff during his junior days here with the Calgary Hitmen. Scott Lorenz brought his entire Pee Wee team here to the Olympic Saddle Dome to meet one of their heroes and get a bunch of autographs. And uh, the Ducks, always so obliging with the fans. Made quite an impression on those young men. There were just smiles from ear to ear all over the place, John. Well, Ryan always likes to come back to Calgary. Obviously a crowd favorite when he was here. Maybe not quite as much now. But a second home indeed for the Regina native. Kessler being worked over by Ladislav Schmid, who now finishes the tackle. I think it's a first down. I was talking with an old teammate of mine who's the GM of the Calgary Hitman, K Kelly Kissio, and asked him about his squad. He said, you know, we're pretty good. We're competitive. I don't have any Ryan Getzlofs in my lineup, however. Kelly Kissio has been in that role with the Hitmen for quite some time now. Manson curls with it in his own zone. Had it knocked off his stick, but Lindholm covers up and angles it into the Calgary zone. One of the few times that we've seen Josh Manson try to force anything. Now he comes up with a turnover at center and headbands for Edom right down the middle and he gives it up. Perry goes across for Getzlaff. Edom parked in front. It's Perry instead and it goes right through it. Penalty coming up to the Flames. Allen holds it in. Across for Botnan. Ducks get the sixth attacker on. Getzlaff looks over at Maroon who jumped off the bench. Instead he'll give it to Botnan. Sammy with a wrist shot. Tipped right on by Edom. And a big save by Hiller. Yeah, really nice design to play. Corey Perry in the middle of things right now in behind the Calgary bench. Now Patty Maroon comes in. Ladislav Schmid, there's a little bit of a history there. Former Duck property. There's been a few run-ins between Schmid and a few of his former teammates in the past. If Perry's in the middle, it's a good sign. He feels good. Cam, the Flames with only six shots on goal this entire game so far. How are you guys keeping the play in their zone? Uh, I think, you know, we're just playing good team defense. Everyone's helping out down low, which uh, it seems like they just have one chance and then we're out of the out of our own end. So if we continue that, it should be uh, should help us give us some success. Thanks, Cam. All right, thank you. Back to you, Johnny. Thank you, Julie. Here's a look at the penalty as Anaheim gets set to go on their second man advantage. Mm -hmm. Weidman comes in to slew foot on Emerson. Edom will send him to the box. Edom came back. Got a real nifty little redirect on that bit from the point by Botnan. It's Botnan curling on the far boards. Lost the handle for a moment. That kind of lost the rhythm of the play. And Perry loses it to Brody, who backhands it all the way down. Ducks had three shots on goal on their only power play opportunity of the game. They were one for nine against the Flames a season ago with the extra man. It's Fowler who will rush it right through the middle of the ice, throws it up the right wing, and it caroms in behind the net. Brody bumped off the puck, though, by Maroon. Rims it around, and Botnan shovels it ahead. Maroon behind the net, leaves it for Perry. Wide open at the point is Fowler. Right back to Perry. Little two-man game there. It's Maroon down low. He'll take it off the back of the net. Getzloff, now they're set up. Cross ice, crisp pass for Fowler. Wrist shot through Maroon, held by Hiller. Pat Maroon looks behind him. 
He had to be careful there. He was almost inside the top of the blue paint. And the onus is on the forward, of course, not to make contact with the goaltender. Good job. A little tap on the back by Jonas Hiller. And Pat Maroon probably thinking, how the heck did he see that so that he was able to swallow up the rebound? That was one of those where Hiller just drops and absorbs. Just over a minute to go on the power play as Kessler wins the draw. Lindholm across, gets it back from Botnick. Winds, fire, score! Palmieri in front. Whether he got a tip, I don't know, but he definitely got a screen. There were two players in the shooting lane, Matt Bolesky and Kyle Palmieri. And that was the cue for Lindholm to just wind up and blast away. So a good read by Hampus Lindholm in the middle of the ice and another face-off win for Ryan Kessler to get things going. Ducks with possession. You got both Anaheim players there. I, I'm not sure who touched that puck. The strange looking movement by the goaltender Hiller who I don't think he ever sees it. Matt Bolesky gets it. He's out high. Let's see if he gets a touch on it. Yeah, he does. Matt Bolesky knocks it down. And another redirected puck goes between the legs of Hiller. It'll be the eighth of the year for Bolesky, who leads the team in shots on goal coming into tonight. And that was just a deft little redirect. It's 2-0 Anaheim. Now Thompson in the corner. Cogliano, oh, he had Silverberg in front, but he couldn't get it through a couple different Calgary defenders. And Weidman brings it back. Up the wing for Glenn Cross, and it's chopped away from him by Manson. Glenn Cross gets it back, holding the zone, and Monahan swings it down low. Gets it back from Hoodler. Can't get to the front of the net. As Thompson stepped in, now... Manson trying to chop it up the wall, hit the skate of Schmied, now puts it to the middle of the ice, and Anaheim breaks out. Cross ice pass behind Cogliano, takes it off the boards, he's onside, threw it to the net, only to have it blocked by Weidman. Pass at center, touched by Hoodler, so no icing, and Fowler gets it from Anderson. Stretches it ahead, and offside were the Ducks, as Raquel got a touch on it at the stripe. Yeah, it actually wasn't Raquel that was offside. Yeah. It was actually the player changing going off the ice. Matt Bileski with his eighth of the season. He had nine all of last year, so the hot start continues for Bileski. Lindholm and Votnin will draw the assist. So we came into tonight talking about how everything starts from the blue line for Calgary. Anaheim has a goal and two assists from their blue line core and a 2-0 lead. Lance Boma taps it in behind the net. Fowler moves it along. Maroon with his back to the forecheck of England. Rims it around. Brendan Bowling from a bad angle throws it off of Anderson. And the carom to the top of the near circle is cleared away by Pat Maroon. England throws it back to center. Pops straight up in the air off of the skate of Clayton Stoner. And Raquel chops at it. That one will end up in the netting above the high glass. And we'll step aside in Calgary. Anaheim converts on the power play. A nice little redirect about 15 feet out by Matt Bolesky. It's 2-0. Well, Sammy Botnin uh, grabs a point. Another point on the power play for him on the goal by Matt Bolesky. Highest percentage of teams' power play goals that any player has been involved in. Botnin has been in on 84.6% of the Ducks. Now 13 power play goals on the season. And with the two points tonight, Sammy Votnin now has eight points in his last seven games. Here's Sean Monahan, leading goal scorer for the Flames this season, and he throws it off the crossbar and out of play. Severe angle for Monahan, who has been quiet, and he's trying to go up and under the bar against Frederick Anderson. He didn't miss by much. He did not miss by much. Long range. That may have gone off the side of the net, actually, John, when I looked at it from that angle. Monahan, 22 goals as a rookie a season ago at age 19. Here's a blocked shot and just unable to nudge it ahead. And fine Perry was Emerson Edom as he fell to his knees. Couldn't get a, the correct angle. Otherwise, I think Perry was in. Trying to catch Giordano. Well, there's a pass to no one in particular for the Flames, so icing is the result. With just over five to go here in the second period in Calgary. Well, there's the guy that's going to spend the majority 
on the time on the ice for the Calgary Flames. I mean, he leads them in every statistical category. And, of course, whenever Getzloff and Perry are over the boards for Bruce Boudreaux, Bob Hartley is assigning that task to Jordan. It'll be interesting, John, to see if he pulls them away from that group if this score remains the same and puts them, you know, less in less of a defensive role and more of an offensive role. Flames have averaged roughly three and a half goals a game this season in their wins. In their losses, they're averaging less than two goals a game. Perry unable to stay on side there. Coming into tonight's action, despite having the third fewest shots on goal per game, the Flames are fifth in the league in goal scoring. Well, look, look recently, 32 goals in their last eight games. Uh, they've been coming rather easily. And tonight, the Ducks' strategy, uh, Bruce Boudreaux's tactic of, of keeping Giordano and Brody in front of you all night long and, and not letting them become a factor in the rush, so far, it has paid off in spades. It's been a little feast or famine for this Flames offense. They've scored four goals or more nine times this year, two goals or less ten times. And the Ducks are happy to say to this point, it's the two goals or less because they lead 2-0. Manson intercepts at center. Ducks have a goal in the first, a goal in the second. The one here in the second came on the power play. Silverberg gets it to the net. Hiller sticks it away. Kessler will get to it. Ryan Kessler on his backhand now. Puts it behind the net. Unable to pull it off the boards with Silverberg, who pursues to the near wall. Ducks spin it around, and Manson will activate. Couldn't get it cleanly, but Kessler does. He missed Silverberg behind the net, and it's Lindholm this time who activates. Yeah, and it's the mobility of the Ducks defense making things happen, keeping pucks in, involved in the cycle in the offensive zone. Silverberg trying to get away from Diaz. Behind the net to Kessler. And again, it's Fowler who will keep the play alive. The defenseman steps up to the hash mark. Great pass across. Cogliano, that went off the post and out of play. No, too bad. Boy, Andrew Cogliano a little bit snake bit these days. And a perfect pass as the cycling wears down the Calgary defenders. And watch them all look at the puck. And you can see that Andrew Cogliano had slid into that soft area. Pass was perfect. The shot was almost perfect. So the face off to the left of Jonas Hiller. He's made 16 saves thus far. And Granlin able to win it from Nate Thompson. Schmied angles it ahead, but Stoner intercepts and gets it to Palmieri. Kyle Palmieri looks up, has Cogliano with him. Thompson as well. Bumps his way behind the Calgary net. Granlund on the backhand uses the glass to send it all the way down. And again, icing the result. Just a little thing, but, but they are forcing the Flames to the backhand side. And that makes getting the puck out of your own end much more difficult. Faceoff comes back to the right of Jonas Hiller. Hiller with eight wins on the young season, seventh in the league. Last played five nights ago in a 4-2 win, or excuse me, a 5-3 win against the Arizona Coyotes, game in which he made 20 saves. On the short end right now of a 2-0 score. Botman wanders back into his own zone. Cross ice for Brian Allen. Allen kind of fumbled it as he tried to flip it ahead. Spoke to Brian this morning. He said, been in four or five games now. Are you in the routine? Is it the day-to-day -day thing after missing the first 14 games with that knee injury? And he said he felt better and better with each game. And the routine seems to be there again. He and Botman, of course, partners nearly exclusively last season. Put back together again by Bruce Boudreaux. Here's Giordano coming late, and it's ripped wide on the one-timer by Hoodler. Botnan puts it up on the glass and out. Giordano, oh my goodness, they're going to call that icing. Giordano almost <laughs> olayed that puck in the neutral zone as it came within an inch of his skate. And then it missed the near post at the other end by about another inch. Good, good, good little sales job yeah. by the Flames captain. Bob Hartley, by the way, called him uh, earlier today the face of the franchise. And when you think about the Calgary Flames, you think about names like you know, Lanny McDonald was the face of the franchise here. Jerome McGinley. Joe Neuendijk here. And this is the new face, Mark Giordano. And, and, and 
You know, 10 years ago, he would have been the unlikeliest of candidates to be granted that moniker. And you have to admire him. You have to admire the way he has worked his way up to the status he now enjoys as, as a top-flight, offensive-minded defenseman. And uh, I'm told a great leader inside the Flames locker room. Yeah, for years I thought he was maybe the most overlooked, underrated player in the league. No longer the case with uh, what he's done so far this season. That scoring streak of nine games coming into tonight. He's also third in the National Hockey League in blocked shots, Brian. This isn't a guy that's all offense all the time. He was a plus 12 to lead the team last year. He said this morning that we have to play a north-south game in order to have success. The Ducks have prevented them from doing that in this game. They have just shut down the neutral zone, and there hasn't been much skating room for the Flames to go north-south. Bruce Boudreaux using his timeout off the icing call down to two and a half to go in the second period. And the Ducks able to clear the zone off the faceoff win. Now they regroup once more. Getzloff takes the feed from Botnan, tried to make a soft little pass into the middle. That was knocked down. Brody from behind the net starts back with Giordano. Angles it ahead. Brody plays the most for Calgary coming into tonight, averaging over 24 minutes a game. Talk so much about Giordano, but the man who handles all the minutes on the blue line and wears number seven. Giordano not far behind as their defense pair. Manson behind the net, chops it along, and Perry finds Getzloff. Or excuse me, it's Edom in full flight, hits the brakes. Now lays it back. Manson just able to keep it in for Getzloff behind the net. Perry in front. Edom just poked away at the moment of truth by the stick of Mark Giordano. Now you knew what Perry was thinking. He didn't want to zip that pass across. He wanted to make it a little bit easier for Emerson Edom to handle it, but by not zipping the pass, look at Emerson Edom slide into the zone and uh, try and get into the soft area, but good reaction by Giordano, who was there with the stick to poke it away. A buck 32 remains second period, and Kessler wins the draw. Stoner carefully across to Fowler, who winds it around the dasher. Paul Mary bumping with Schmid. And Juris supports up the wall for Berchi. His pass intercepted. Great bit of back checking there by Kessler, who got in the passing lane. And Valeski is offside on the near side. Once again this season, our friends at American Honda bring us our three-star leaderboard. If one of the Ducks players is a star of the game, we give them points. And then we add those points up at the end of the season. Frederick Anderson. Top the list along with the captain, Corey Perry, after taking five games off with the illness, still not far behind it. Something tells me Sammy Votnin's going to be sticking around the top of that list. Kind of a wide open race this year. A quarter of the way through here tonight. It's game 20 on the season for Anaheim. Also their 10th road game of the season. Bruce Boudreaux was asked this morning about a heavy road schedule from here till the Christmas holiday. What does he tell his team? He simply said, win. He said, we've been good on the road. 6-2-1. and one. Bolesky's bid blockered away by Hiller. And the Ducks in mid-change able to keep the puck in with less than a minute to go in the period. Silverberg from behind the net. Turns on the backhand. Tries to make a pass. Boy, he was two and a half feet away from Hiller. Schmid sweeps it out. Poked away from Hoodler, but he follows up. Goudreau tried to go high short side, and staying with that was Anderson. Yeah, good play by Freddie Anderson that time to hug that short side post. 20 seconds in the period as Cogliano speeds out of the Calgary, or into the Calgary zone, I beg your pardon. Can't get it to the front of the net as he just lifts it in behind the goal. 10 seconds in the period as T.J. Brody turns on the Jets. Gets center red, bounces it towards the Anaheim goal. Careful with a bouncing puck is Hampus Lindholm, who will backhand it out as the horn sounds, and the Ducks double their lead in the second. Well, this is a dominant period by the Ducks. So they completely control the neutral zone. And Freddie Anderson didn't have to do much, and that's just the way Bruce, Bro Bruce Boudreaux wants it. Uh, I love the way, John, that they continue to attack and cycle and wear down the smaller Flames team down low in their own zone. We were impressed with the defensive effort in the open opening period, the Ducks surrendered only four shots. In the second, they surrender only three shots on goal. It's been Jonas Hiller who's gotten the lion's share of the work. And the Ducks add a power play goal in the middle frame and now have a 2-0 lead after two in Calgary.
One in the first, one in the second for Anaheim at Scotiabank Saddle Dome, and it's 2 0 Ducks after two over the Calgary Flames. In case you're just joining us, time for tonight's AT&T U-verse Rewind. We'll get you caught up as to how we got here. A couple of offensive zone face-off wins for the Ducks and a couple of goals. Yeah, Sammy Votnin just rips it. It goes off a Calgary defender between the wickets of Hiller and then Mapoleski with a nifty little touch on the puck. It was Hampus Lindholm blasting away. Votnin also got an assist on that, so he's two points so far on the evening. Thus far, it has been all Ducks and the majority of this game, probably 70% of this game, has been played down low in Calgary territory. That is exactly what Bruce Boudreaux has been looking for. It's fair to say Calgary's actually fortunate to still be in the hockey game based on territorial hockey to this point. It's just a two-goal game, and Bruce Boudreaux is well aware his team is only two-thirds of the way there. We talked about it earlier. In goal differential in the third period, the Calgary Flames are plus 13 through 19 games this season. So Anaheim still with work to be done. 20 minutes on the scoreboard here in their first of two in Western Canada before they'll return home. Their next home action is Sunday night at Honda Center as they'll play host to the Arizona Coyotes. Head coach taking a peek over and seeing who Bob Hartley's going to start to begin this period. And interesting, you know, Hartley hasn't changed at all, Johnny. He hasn't changed his lines at all, hasn't mixed up his deep bearings. See him uh, whispering into the ear of Johnny Goudreau what he needs more of from him in this third period. Goudreau, a native of Salem, New Jersey. And has really made a splash here in Calgary. You know, anytime they're calling you Johnny Hockey in Calgary, <laughs> that's saying something. Yeah, a little, a little bit of pressure that comes along with that moniker, though. And he seems to have embraced it, though. I mean, they have nothing but good things to say about the, the young man and the energy he brings to the rink each and every game. He's still just 21 years of age, so plenty of room to grow. As we get an icing call just eight seconds in to begin the third period. Well, the Ducks, uh, I mean, this building, Anaheim completely has dominated Calgary, of course, at Honda Center, but hasn't been the case here at the Olympic Saddle Dome. Just four, five, and one in their last 10 games played in this building. And remember, these two teams will meet again just a week from tonight back at Honda Center. Division foes, they're going to play five times this year, and three of the games are going to be here. The Ducks will be here in late February, and then again in March. Boy, a little miscommunication as Anderson had his arm up to tell his teammates it was icing. And the officials say play on. It's Palmieri who gets it deep into the Calgary zone and follows up. On his backhand, got it to Kessler, who got it to the net. Fat rebound off of Hiller, and Palmieri just barely beaten to it. Yeah, nice play, and, and Palmieri uh, shows good speed away from the puck again to find Kessler. And you know what really you know, compliments those players is the fact that Matt Bolesky goes right to the top of the crease area. We got a penalty yeah, upcoming it's here. it's going to go against the Ducks. Palmieri was mixing it up with Paul Byron in front of the bench as the two of them got tangled on their way back to make a change. Here was the play with Matt Bolesky right on the doorstep. See if we can pick up the penalty. Well, that's not the penalty there. You know, if, if, if you're able to stay on those two, they mix it up for quite a while after that. And Paul Mary gets called for a rough. That happened over immediately in front of the two benches. So perhaps a short little punch thrown. So a big opportunity for the Flames. Their second power play chance of the night comes early in the third on fresh ice. Giordano off the faceoff wing, gives it to Granlund in a glove, saved by Anderson through traffic. Now, Curtis Glencross uh, was the front net presence for the Flames there, and he elected to give it the old Ole. Watch Glencross in front of the net. When this puck comes down to the side, he actually gets out of the way, takes a swipe at it with the stick. Most coaches will tell their players, don't do that. Stay in front of the goaltender's vision. The chances of a shot going in, even a deflected puck from close range, if the goalie sees it, are very, very slim. Glenn Cross, after every practice, spends time tipping pucks with his teammates 
in front of the net. Might be their best at it, but that time he was unable to make contact. So Hiller forced to play it off a face-off win. The Ducks ice in the puck. And now Thompson pressures. Brody from behind the net. Headmans, and here's Johnny Gaudreau. Into the Anaheim zone. Pulls up. High slot pass intended for Granlin. Tapped away twice by Getzloff. And Thompson skates back into the Calgary end with it. Poked off his stick, but he follows up behind the net as the rest of the Ducks change. And now Granlin will start back. A minute 15 to go on the penalty to Paul Mayer. A good hard work and shift there by Nate Thompson. Goudreau nudging it ahead, and it's Glenn Cross who will handle his pass back to the line. Broken up, and Votnin puts it on the backhand and hoists it all the way down. Pressure on Weidman in the person of Silverberg who wins the puck. He gets it back, then gets upended along the boards, and three on two are the Flames. Poodler across the line, looks up, the trailer. Diaz couldn't settle it, then he fired it wide. And it'll come around and out. Never understand why players dead in the slot do the opposite of what you'd want them to do as a coach, and, and you know, go off to the side and, and really not improve your shooting position, make it a much worse shooting position. Hiller has to play it away from Valeski with 25 seconds remaining in the power play, and Hoodler will start over. Watched by Kessler, and it's Dennis Weidman who curls with it. Throws it across, and now it's Monahan into the Anaheim zone. Sean Monahan moves it along. Good puck protection there by Manson, and that enables Anaheim to break back. It's Kessler and Getzloff shorthanded. Manson and Lindholm both using their hips effectively that time to protect the puck by a little time. Paul Mary out of the box, the Ducks full strength. Glenn Cross from Goudreau, and I think Anderson got a piece of the glove on it. Juris right back into the middle again. It's Glenn Cross, save Anderson. So the push from the Flames aided by the power play. And we're just over three minutes into the third. It was Josh Manson who got hit by the sniper there, and he goes down, and uh, boy, that's a point-blank opportunity by Glenn Cross that he just rips wide of the net. That's a big break for the Ducks. You're going to see Manson go down. Right? Oh, that was the second opportunity that swallowed up by Frederick Anderson. So Glenn Cross knows he had one on his stick, but he should have buried. Ducks with a face-off win in their own zone, and Fowler forced to rim it around away from the forecheck of Lance Boma. Giordano puts it back below the goal line, all the way around. Brody turning away from Emerson Edom, and he just keeps it in the zone. Now hands it off, gets it back. T.J. Brody centers off the skate of Granlin. Right there for Hoodler who scores. The Ducks vacate the front of the net. A defensive breakdown. We've seen a couple here in the last few shifts. And the Flames have got life. This crowd has got life. They move it right down to the slot, and the puck, unfortunately, gets right through the feet of Everson Edom and just kind of sits there. And not much chance for Frederick Anderson. Boy, if I'm Anderson, I'm having a talk with the referee because there were a couple of Calgary players in that crease area, and there was a little bit of contact with the Anaheim netminer prior to that puck going in. So Yuri Hoodler who led the Flames in scoring a season ago with 54 points as his sixth of the season. And just like that, Calgary right back in this game, it's two to one. Botman in his own zone, moves it ahead. And back to Allen it comes. He can't angle it off the boards for Maroon to stay on side. And Ladislav Schmid stick handles into the Anaheim zone. He feathers it to the corner. Allen fends him off using his big six foot four frame and Votman digs it out. Pestered there by Monahan. He has to reverse it back for his defense partner. That's great play by Sammy Botman. Again, he gets those legs moving. And uh, it just allows him to escape all that traffic. Lindholm at center. Rockets it back in. Hiller got a stick on it. 
Diaz is there. Around the boards, Lindholm quickly to the net. That hits Silverberg as he tried to get a screen. Cogliano can't find the handle. And Manson did a good job. He kept it in the zone. Cogliano puts it behind the net. Hiller waits. And then ultimately just left it there for Diaz, who rims it hard around. This will go all the way down. And icing is the call. Well, different game now for Bruce Boudreaux's team. We were talking with the coach and asking him about the Flames, and he said, look, they're a hard-working team, yes, and I'm not trying to take anything away from them. He says, but they don't have the players we have in our lineup. If we match their work ethic, we will get the result that we're looking for. And then he added a little bit of a disclaimer and said, unless they get a couple of really lucky bounces or something like that. Well, it's a one-bounce game right now. Two to one, the Ducks on top as Anderson is out to play it. The Calgary goal coming on their 10th shot on goal in this game. And now it's Anaheim's turn to ice the puck. Long way to go at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome, just over five minutes into the third period. Yeah, and so more of a focus now in a one goal game on face-offs and winning possession in the defensive zone in particular. Ryan Kessler out there to take the draw against Granlin. And with a little help from his friends, he wins the draw. Palmieri stepped in and stabbed it down low, but Brody pinches up the far wall to keep it in. Hit the referee. Stoner's attempt to clear, held in at the line. Granlin with the point coverage, and he can't ricochet that shot all the way to the Anaheim net. Flames with a little renewed life. You can see the pep in their step as Giordano moves it ahead. Bomo with speed, drops it for Hoodler. His shot blocked right to Grantland, and that was blocked. Fowler with a couple of shot blocks in succession. Now Giordano walks the line to the middle. His shot off the little friendly fire as it was tipped by Grantland to the corner. Valeski trying to protect the puck. Makes a nice little backhand pass, and Fowler finds Kessler clearing the zone. Paul Mary will pressure Brody back in the Calgary end, and he lifted his stick, and a penalty coming up to Kyle Paul Mary. Wow, that is, that's a tough little ticky-tack call against Kyle Paul Mary. One hand on his stick, slight contact with the hands. And Graham Skilleter has the call. The Ducks touch up. And the Flames right back on the power play when we return. 13.39 to go in the third in Calgary in what is now a one-goal game. Well, nervous moment for Kyle Palmieri, who has been labeled as a cheater. He's going to get a penalty right here for hooking. Not much of one. Boy, just a little lift of the stick by Palmieri on Brody. There is some minor contact with the hands, but... He can't believe that call, and right now he's a nervous young man sitting in that penalty box. Ryan Getzloff, Ryan Kessler having a rather extended conversation right now with the referee that made that call. I'm Brad Meyer over to talk to Bruce Boudreau about it. It was Graham Skilleter, the other referee, who made the call, and it's Meyer who's over explaining it. We haven't seen a lot of Graham Skilleter. This might be the second time he's worked a Ducks game this season. It doesn't appear as if Brad Meyer's words had a lot of impact on Bruce Boudreaux. Kessler blocks the Giordano bit. Tries to go the other way shorthanded, and Giordano recovers. Kessler is just a shot-blocking machine tonight. Now Brody strides up the left side, tries to hit the brakes, loses the puck. Getzloff moves it over. Brian Allen with time and space goes right up the middle. So a good job for the first 30 seconds of the penalty kill here for Anaheim. Third Calgary man advantage of the game. They're 0 for 2. Hoodler's pass broken up, but he swats it back into the zone. And Goudreau moves it a little further down. Monahan for Hoodler who sweeps it back. Giordano quickly to the net. Rebound off of Anderson is swatted away. Giordano holds the zone, and his bit tipped over top by Goudreau. Cogliano lost his stick as he couldn't get the puck out of the feet of Goudreau. He'll go to the bench to get another. Giordano to Hoodler. Hoodler all the way to the dot into the middle. Monahan and a glove saved by Anderson. That's a big stop right there. One of the few times that the Flames were able to get a hold of the puck in the middle of the ice. Now, just watch the goaltender here. Watch the patient movement. Gets out to the top of the goal crease. Big man doesn't panic even though he's down on his knees and he sees Monahan with the puck on his stick. 
I think Bob Hartley's going to use his timeout here with 58 seconds remaining in the power play. And at this juncture, both teams will have exercised their timeouts. And it's a smart move by Harley. He knows, you know, against this Anaheim team, they just haven't had much in, in terms of scoring opportunities in this game. They might not get a better opportunity the rest of the way based on how the Ducks were able to shut them down on the first two periods at even strength. So this is their chance. Big power play opportunity. The Flames... They're a little bit front-loaded with their talent to begin with, so why not call a timeout here and give your number one power play unit essentially the full two minutes? Yeah, it was Craig Conroy, the assistant coach, who had the dry erase board out as we look at the yet another blocked shot, particularly on the penalty kill by the former Selkie Trophy winner, Ryan Kessler, who will make his return to Vancouver on Thursday night. A game you can see on KCOP Channel 13. And now as Hoodler is knocked down by Kessler, the whistle blows as they freeze the puck along the near wall. And uh, the faceoff got to come outside. I mean, it had to be caught up in the equipment of a Calgary Flames player for them to blow the puck because they clearly lost sight of the puck. So the faceoff comes outside the blue. This is a real territorial battle here anytime you are in a special team situation. 50 seconds left in the penalty to Paul Mary. And the Flames control, forced back into their own zone. It's TJ Brody. Up the middle for Hoodler, and caught on the back check by Kessler, and that denies entry to the zone. Monahan has to turn back once more. And again, it's Brody. Brody, who has a couple of power play goals this season. Now it gives way, and I just don't want to shoot it in. Yeah, I gave it to Giordano. He didn't want to dump it in, and then a little miscommunication enables Nate Thompson to ice it, and the power play now winds to 15 seconds. Time for one last rush for the red-clad Flames with the man advantage. Brody's pass denied by Perry, who blocks it in the neutral zone, then gets a stick on it again. Glenn Cross can't get it through Perry either. Good job by Corey Perry, and the penalty is over. Out of the box is Paul Mary. 0 for 3 tonight on the power play are the Flames. They had two shots on that power play and have three shots on the power play as Getzloff with the, just a home run off the end boards that Perry was able to get to first, so no icing. And now Maroon has it in his skates down low. That's one of those plays where Corey Perry and Ryan Getzloff they just know one another so well. Maroon digs it off the boards with help from Getzloff, and Anaheim can't hold the zone. Getzloff will hinge it back and plays catch with Sammy Votnin. Votnin's pass across out of the reach of Brian Allen. Coming in late, Weidman scores! Well, the Ducks turn it over and Weidman says thank you very much. And uh, this is a rocket into the top corner. They have full control. Botnan looking for his defense partner. And it's just a little bit out of the wheelhouse of Brian Allen. And what a shot. Traffic in front. Weidman hammers it. And no chance for the goaltender, Anderson. Granlin will draw the assist. And just like that, the Flames right on cue with two unanswered goals here in the third period. They're now plus 15 in the third period this season. Well, I, I gotta believe, John, that based on their success this year, it's a huge confidence boost for them. Once they get one, they think they're in the game. And now, the pressure ramped up on the Ducks for sure. Cogliano, a one-man wrecking crew below the goal line, now finally gets it out to Hampus Lindholm. His wrist shot off a skate goes wide. Trying to reel it in was Hiller, but he can't. Silverberg beat him to it. Silverberg flanked by two defenders, gives it up, gets it back from Cogliano. Now takes it to the other side of the net, brings it in front, turns, fires, and... Way up high on his knees to get a shoulder on it was Hiller knocking it out of play. Hey, Jonas Hiller with that play on your knees at all time style is able to play that way. He's got a very long torso and that allows him even from the ground to get the shoulders 
high and protect those top corners. And as we have seen over the years, oftentimes, his head on it, too. Yeah, that's true. Not afraid. European soccer style to just head it right out. And now this one off of his glove. Off the faceoff, Bolesky missing the mark. Kessler in the corner, trying to get it back to Fowler at the line, but he can't. Giordano moves it along. Brody backhands it right up the middle, and Fowler retreats through neutral ice with it. Just past the halfway mark of the third period, the Flames have erased a two-goal deficit here in the final frame. Paul Mary shot deflected out of play by Monahan, and we will step aside. It's a 2-2 tie in Calgary with just under 10 to play. Game summary, we expected scoring from defense tonight, maybe more from Calgary than anything, but Sammy Botnan has been involved in both Anaheim goals. Matt Bolesky on the power play in the second, and finally the Calgary defense stepping up. Dennis Weidman moments ago with the game-tying goal, his sixth of the season. You know, Weidman uh, has always been known as an offensive defenseman twice. He scored a career-high 13 goals while a member of the Boston Bruins. And uh, that big shot of his very much in play on the Flames' tying goal. Marcus Granlund, who was recalled on the 29th of October from Adirondack of the American League, has assisted on both Calgary goals here tonight. Granlund, in just nine games since his recall, has eight points. You were talking about the contributions earlier that the Flames have gotten from young, quicker, and in some cases, smaller forwards. Granlund certainly fits that bill. So it's a brand new game as Perry works from behind the net, trying to pull it around the defender, Diaz, and get it to the front of the net. But that's denied, and it's angled out center ice where Hoodler, somewhat fans, trying to put it into the middle of the ice. Flames are changing, so room for Votnin. He storms into the Calgary zone as a man all over him tried to drop it along the wall. Perry dragged it with him. Votnin held the line, throws it to the net, tipped just wide by Perry. Yeah, quick little wrist shot by Votnin again. Votnin angles it to center as again the Flames trying to get changes. Emerson Edom is the recipient of it, drops it for Silverberg, and his stick was lifted at the moment of truth. Well, that's similar to what you were talking about earlier, Brian. In the middle of the ice, Emerson Edom trying to maybe be a little too benevolent as icing will be the call here against Calgary. He took it wide and dropped it back. Corey Perry with those hands, great hands of his, just kind of circling or around the middle of the ice, and Botnan senses he's there, throws it. It's a high tip by Perry. Remember, both goals that have beaten Jonas Hiller tonight have been redirected pucks. So the face off to Hiller's right. Thompson to oppose Granlin. And Granlin able to control it. Up the boards, nice job by Lindholm, who stepped up to glove it down, and then Silverberg knocked it away from Goudreau. Goudreau follows up at center and gets it deep. Bob Hartley matching lines now with regularity as the Flames get it deep and get a change. Lindholm moves it to the left side. His defense partner Manson through the middle. A nice pass for Thompson into the Calgary zone on the backhand. Stick save Hiller. Rebound in behind the net. Chopped around and Thompson able to seal it off. He and Schmid do battle there. And Schmid headmans for Juris. Juris to center and Boma stripped by Manson. Great read by the young defender who jumps around Weidman but then can't get it back in the slot. Cogliano pounces on it behind the net. In front, looking for Manson, just got away from him. Kessler keeps it alive for Stoner. Fumbled it for a moment, now throws a wrist shot to the net that's blocked out center. Boy, Josh Manson showing a lot of confidence, making some plays. And not afraid to in jump a tie up. game, yeah. yeah. Not afraid to jump up into the zone and challenge people. Hoodler turns at center and throws it to the open right wing. Stoner got an angle on Monahan and angles it off the boards just wide. No icing as Hiller reaches out to stop it. Down to seven minutes to go in regulation in Calgary. The game tied at two. Pass tipped across the blue line and brought in by Monahan. And then Glenn Cross goes to the front of the net only to have Monahan's shot blocked. And one of the few times. The Ducks have yielded the blue line easily. And that's the one thing that Bruce Boudreau cautioned his team to do uh, against the Flames. See the defenseman all backing in. 
They give this team the blue line, and then they send that fourth man into the attack, and life gets interesting. There's that play by Josh Manson. Jumps inside of Weidman and almost able to create a dangerous chance. He stepped up in the neutral zone to intercept the pass to begin that rush as well. Very confident-looking plays indeed. Now it's Edom into the Calgary zone, trying to chip it past Brody and go get it. Squirts to Giordano on the near side. And he'll skate it ahead, fires it off the stick of Goudreau, then has it poked away by Sammy Votnin. Giordano throws it across, looking over his shoulder, Brian Allen, to see where the pressure's coming from. Reverses it, Votnin has Goudreau all over him. Goudreau comes away with the puck, taps it back, it's Weidman again, and he scores! the Anaheim defense and they force another turnover. Here's the dump in and it's the speed of Goudreau who is all over Brian Allen and then Sammy Votnin and look at him use his feet. It's a knuckleball and I don't know if Frederick Anderson was jostled but watch the goaltender Anderson falling forward it appeared to be some contact between his own defenseman and the goaltender that knocked him off balance. And that's off the glove and in. So for the first time tonight, the Flames lead 3-2, and we're down to six minutes to go in regulation. Anaheim has yielded only 14 shots on goal, and seven in the third, but three have found the net. Weidman has two, and it's 3-2 Calgary. Goudreau draws the assist off the takeaway, and now Manson starts out of his own zone. Finds open ice on left wing. Josh Manson protects on the backhand, tries to center, knocked away by the stick of Hiller, and spilled with Silverberg, a penalty coming up to the Flames. Fans don't like it, but he was tripped. Lindholm out of the corner, gives it to Perry, who comes off the bench. Tries to protect the puck from Setaguchi, who touches up, and Anaheim will have a critical man advantage when we come back. 5.21 left in Calgary. A 2-0 lead has evaporated. The Ducks down a goal. Well, here is the moment of truth for the Ducks. Jacob Silverberg is going to try and get to this loose puck. Actually wins a battle for it, and Josh Juris reaches. Little hook on the left leg sends Silverberg down. Well, a two-minute minor penalty against Josh Juris, and the Ducks power play with a must-have. Anaheim one for two on the night with the extra man and they win the draw. Fowler walks the line over to Botman. Right back, Kessler returns it and it trickles through Fowler who kept it in. Great effort. Finds Votnin who wires it. It's behind Hiller and somehow Bolesky's stick was taken away so he couldn't tap it in. Votnin at the point slides it over for Fowler. Drives ahead. Shot pass in front. Paul Mary and it trickles over Hiller and in. The same play he tried on the power play in the second. Hiller got enough of it but he lost it as it went airborne. And it's softly rolled in behind the Calgary net minor. Oh, just an enormous power play goal for the Ducks. And it comes from the second power play unit. They move the puck around crisply. Paul Mary backs into the crease, pops it over the goaltender. There it is over the line. No doubt about it. Just prior to that, boy, Hiller had made a save. I don't know how it didn't go in. Kessler was there hammering away, but good puck movement by the Ducks. They show some real poise here in the late stages of this game. With 4.55 remaining, they have come back and tied it up. Paul Mary's first of the year on the power play. It didn't touch the back of the net, but it counts just the same. You know, looking at it again from that angle, almost looked like Giordano poked, came across yeah, poked and it off poked that stick. puck up into the air and over top of the netminder. Silverberg one times it off the end boards and Hiller with a good stop that he sweeps back in. Now yeah, that backside look was a good look. Yeah, here it is again. And uh, watch Giordano go in there with his stick and he leads with the poke. And it's, uh, it's almost like the two sticks at the same time come together at that puck. 
over top of the shoulder of Jonas Hiller. Well, what a game here tonight. Now tied in three. As Thompson steps in to take the draw, Ducks with another faceoff win. Lindholm to the net, tip by Cogliano, and that just hit Hiller. Silverberg collects the loose change. Cycles it down low, out of the reach of Thompson. And it's jabbed ahead, Manson has to retreat, giving up the line. Here's Granlin with speed, the give and go off of him, and then off of the left pad of Anderson. Penalty coming up to the Ducks. Wow, the officials have found their whistles at the most critical time of the game. This is the fourth penalty called in the third period. It's going to be a hooking penalty against Jacob Silverberg, and there it is, a little tug on the shoulder. And that was Grandlin who was trying to bust into open ice, so Silverberg sits. Power play came through. Now the Ducks need the other half of the special teams equation to get the job done here. The Flames with their fourth man advantage of the night. It comes at 15.42 of the third. And they win a face-off and clear the zone. Moments ago, Palmieri's first of the year officially from Fowler and Votnin. So Sammy Votnin with a goal and two assists tonight. But the task at hand is the penalty kill. Seems the bigger the moment, the better Kessler gets in the face-off circle. Monahan's pass back, deflected by Getzloff, and that kept Giordano from having it alone at the top of the circles. Kessler pressures, forcing Hiller to play it away. Half a minute gone in the penalty to Silverberg. 3.45 left in the third in Calgary, tied at three. Johnny Goudreau works the left wing half wall. Down low for Monahan. He'll try the other side. Giordano walks the line, back for Monahan. This is Yuri Hoodler. Hoodler curls to the middle. Kept to the outside by Thompson and Allen. Now he'll let Monahan try. TJ Brody's wrist shot blocked and swept away by Botnin. And a good job by the PK there. They showed patience, active sticks in the passing lanes, and they were able to get the clear. And then Chase either will stay inside and now changes for the shorthanded unit. Lindholm digs it out of the corner. And here's Josh Manson. He takes it as far as he can, and then his high wrist shot into the glove of Hiller. And he thinks better of going after it. The defenseman back to retreat. Half a minute left in the Calgary man advantage. Diaz whips it around. Granlin digs it off the end boards, trying to go high. Excuse me, it was Glenn Cross tried to go high in the backhand, and Anderson with a big stop there. Fans wanted a penalty call on Kessler. Paul Byron has it back to the line. Diaz over to Weidman. One timer fought off by Anderson. Yeah, that was off the mask. And it was Weidman again with another bomb. Yeah, going for the rare defenseman hat trick. Dennis Weidman. Penalty is over. Silverberg out of the box. Byron behind the net. Granlin spilled in front. It's Weidman again. His wrist shot is blocked. Who else? Kessler who swats it out of harm's way. Right, Ryan Kessler, that was just a beastly shift by him once again. Under two to go in regulation. Even if that was touched by Setaguchi, he was on the wrong side of the red line, so icing will bring the faceoff back into the Calgary zone. John, I, I think this last shot by Weidman tattoos Anderson right in the mask, yeah. The masks that these goaltenders wear today are, are such... Well, that's a new one tonight. Great him. protective pieces. Of, no flat surfaces. So every slap shot or, that comes in and hits him in the head, it's, it's a glancing blow. They are designed that way. Frederick Anderson debuting that mask here tonight. He's worn it in practice a couple of times. He told me after the morning skate this morning he was going to put it into play tonight in the game. That's his Reservoir Ducks helmet, if you will. Under two to play as Boma gets it to the front of the net and it's slapped away, held in at the point by Giordano. Hard around the boards for Brody, his defense partner, all the way to the hash mark on his backhand. Turns away from Stoner. Still possesses. It's Giordano, his wrist shot. Fought off by Anderson, and the rebound swept away by Stoner will vacate the zone. Yeah, and they're just like two little jitterbugs 
Giordano and Brody always up on the play. Monahan has it taken off his stick on a nice defensive play by Botnan. He can only clear the zone though. Now a minute remains in regulation. Perry knocks it down in the neutral zone, curls it to the middle of the ice. Kessler racing after it. And Bolesky follows up. Hoodler wins the puck, however. 45 seconds left. Goudreau can't handle the pass at center. Bolesky throws it deep. Hiller out to play it. Moves it quickly. Hoodler receives the pass at center. Lindholm wouldn't give him the blue line, so he throws it in. Granlin bumped hard in the corner. Bolesky's there to support and comes away with it. Yeah, good support by Bolesky there. Manages to pick up the loose change and allow his team to get the easy clear. Getzloff pursues after he hoisted it into the zone and finds Perry behind the net. Perry brings it in front off his stick, though. No one but Flames there to clear it away. This won't go far enough for icing, and Byron beaten to it by Fowler. Manson careful off the boards. Cogliano can't field it cleanly. That's going to do it for regulation. The Ducks, who looked comfortably ahead 2-0 after 3, then got down 3-2, find themselves in overtime yet again. Tied at 3 in Calgary. It's bonus hockey north of the border in Calgary. 3-3 through regulation. The Flames and Ducks stay with us. Immediately following the conclusion of tonight's game, it's Ducks Live, brought to you by Mazda. And let's see why we're not done yet. Well, it's been a very entertaining game, dominated by Anaheim for the first two periods. Botnin got on the board early for the Ducks, and then Matt Molesky with a nifty little redirect would make it 2-0. Looked like smooth sailing, right? Well, not so much. Calgary Flames get on the board, just thrown into the slot and bang home into a wide open net, and then it was the Dennis Weidman show. One cannon from the right point, and then later on, kind of a rolling puck would come back to wide, then a knuckleball would go off the glove of Frederick Anderson up into the top corner. Kyle Palmieri, second game of the season, scores a crucial power play goal in the third to tie it. And that brings us to Sammy Votnin, tonight's Land Rover player of the game. He has figured in all three Anaheim goals tonight. Well, there's no question that Votnin and Kessler have been the best two duck forwards and or duck players in this game. And you would say that certainly Dennis Weidman and Johnny Goudreau has caught my eye, John. He has been quick to get pressure on the Ducks defense. Goudreau has been in on most of the situations where the Calgary has been able to force a turnover. Now this is where the speed of the Flames becomes even more dangerous. Four on four hockey. Granlin who has assisted on two of the three goals for the Flames in this game. Starts at center, and he's out there with Johnny Goudreau. Ducks control the draw, but pressure on the puck, and it's high in the air through the neutral zone. Lindholm nudges it in, and Palmieri got a stick on it. Lindholm will hold the zone. Just flips it up the boards. Kessler in full battle with Weidman, and the Flames control and boy Weidman just came out of that little one-on-one -on -one battle with Kessler and just took off icing the call as the Ducks clear it back the hard way you can no tell the Flames just want to go 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, get on your horse popular term here in Calgary in a cow town like Calgary yeah. And that, that really sums them up. I mean, there, there wasn't much of that in the first two periods as Anaheim really controlled the neutral zone. But a lot more determination, I thought, on, on the Flames' forecheck later portion of this game. Here's Brody off the face-off win. Monaghan keeps control and now steps all the way to the ladies' tees and fires over top. It'll come up the wall, and Lindholm races after it. Brody able to... Hinge over and beat him to it. Yeah, a little miscommunication there between Kessler and Lindholm. Now it's Hoodler up the right boards. Forced back. He gives it to Mark Giordano. He floats one wide. And Hoodler gets to it. Spins off the boards into the middle of the ice. He's got some space. He'll hand it off, get it back. He didn't get much on it. Anderson makes the save. Still loose. Oh, Hoodler gave it back to Brody, who missed by four feet. Anderson seemed to be out of position, and Hoodler had a lot of net, but he made a pass. Now he's got it again. 
all the motion. Throws the it to the net. End. Yeah, so much motion, John. Excuse me. From the back end confuses the Ducks as to who has who. And it leads to a couple of point blank bids for Calgary. Unbelievable that Yuri Hoodler did not shoot either one of those. A smart glove save a moment ago by Anderson at the end of all that. He realized that the Ducks needed a change. And by holding the puck, Getzloff and Perry come out along with Fowler and Botnan for the Ducks. Perry returns it to Fowler behind the net, has to use a skate to stop it, and then is forced out. Ahead for Perry, who does a good job to receive the pass. Now he lays it back for the captain. Gets lopped through the middle of the ice. Cross the line. Nice feed to Fowler. Tees it up. Blocker saved by Hiller. He was trying to go far post there, and he had it ticketed. Gets lopped. Gets it back to Votnin. Right back to the captain, who lifts his stick, and Diaz forces it out of the zone. Fowler circles back. Two minutes gone in overtime as the Ducks regroup. Corey Perry up the right side, strides into the Calgary zone. Goes wide on Diaz, now in behind the net. Ducks changing behind the play defensively. Gets off from behind the net, upended. Perry's there to pick it up. And then he overskates it. Gets off will go to the bench for a change. And Weidman measures things and is forced back. Halfway through overtime, Dennis Weidman moves it ahead. Granlin into the Anaheim zone, feeds it on the off wing. It's Goudreau behind the net, tried to wrap it around, curled it right back through the crease. For a little guy, it doesn't, it seems counterintuitive, but th that wraparound bid by Goudreau, so dangerous despite the fact he doesn't have any reach yeah. whatsoever. To the front of the net goes Granlin. Goudreau chops at it, and that one's in the netting above the high glass. So uh, a wraparound bid by Johnny Goudreau is just pure speed. Knocks the stick out of Frederick Anderson's hand. And that makes life a lot more interesting for the Duck Netminder. And then here's the wraparound right here where he tries to throw it short side, but he's he's just so quick. A few years ago, the NHL made the nets less deep, the less depth to the bottom of the net. Makes the wraparound bid all that more dangerous for the attacking forward. Or with that speed, it's not hard to figure why Goudreau had 80 points in 40 games at the NCAA level last year for Boston College. Far and away, the leading scorer in the nation. Now it's Thompson. Into the Calgary zone. Takes the shot and Hiller holds on. Oh, no problem. That time for Jonas Hiller. A good decision by Thompson, but... In tight spaces, he can't really wind up and, and hammer the shot. Got to snap it in there. Down to 96 seconds left in overtime. The general managers deciding earlier today that they will no longer dry scrape at the end of regulation, although they did it here tonight. We're told that will not go into effect until Saturday. There's been so much talk over the years. If four on four doesn't get it decided in three or four minutes, then maybe that they would switch and go play three on three for three or four minutes following that. That's something that would have to go through the competition committee, however. They're doing it in the American League right now, and it's interesting the way they do it. They, they start four on four. It's a seven-minute overtime period. That's a lot. And as soon as you pass the three-and-a-half-minute mark, the next face-off, it goes to three on three. Well, as I said earlier this week on our pregame show, it seems ever since the league instituted the shootout, they're doing everything they can not to go to the shootout. That would be another way to do it. Paul Byron to center for the Flames. A minute 10 to go in overtime. Drops it off. The drop pass broken up by Lindholm. Has to battle the puck out of the zone and then does Ned nudge it ahead for Perry. Perry across the line with Kessler. Kessler drops it back, and Lindholm had to go through him. He was fortunate to recover it before Byron got there. 50 seconds in overtime. Kessler snaps it over. Perry tries to give it back, and Goudreau on the back check. Intercepted. And here he goes. He's off to the races, and he headmans for Granlin. Drops it back. Goudreau in behind the net. Turns in front. Sets up Giordano. Blocked. Goudreau has it again. 30 seconds to go. He puts them on the edge of their seats in this building every time he picks up the puck. He does. 
Brody trying to get around Kessler. Forced wide behind the net. Tries to wrap it around, and Anderson got the left pad there in time. Penalty coming up to Kessler as he twists Brody down in the corner with 19.6 seconds left. It's a cross-checking call. And that could have been an embellishment. It's a young referee that makes the call again. We got a look at it right here. There's Brody. He's losing his balance. That's a dive. And uh, boy, if anything, it's a no call. Well, if it's a call, it's also a dive. You can just call the dive, right? You can. You can. Fifth power play of the night for Calgary. Doesn't happen enough. 19.6 seconds left. The faceoff becomes critical. Thompson beaten by Monahan on the draw. Giordano at the line. They get it into the middle. Back to Giordano. Wanted to hammer it. Brody will instead. Excuse me, it's Weidman. A sprawling save by Anderson, but he can't cover up. Still loose behind the net, and Getzloff comes away with it. Puts it on the back end. Didn't clear past Giordano. Slashed away from Giordano on a good effort by Getzloff. Good recovery by Ryan Getzloff on Giordano. Boy, you hit forced to the backhand. He gave it away, but did battled to get back. I tell you what, it's a great stop by Freddie Anderson because the screen didn't allow him to see that pass when it was released. The traffic in front, he was late getting across to the short side, but a beautiful save with the right leg. So we will go to a shootout tonight in Calgary. Each team has earned a point, so Anaheim will stay atop the Pacific Division, regardless of the outcome in the shootout. And this may be one of those moments, or one of those situations, Brian, where the Ducks shooters might have a little bit of an advantage against Jonas Hiller, or vice versa, because of the familiarity they've had with one another in practice and how often the practice drills you know, are one-on-one -on -one with the goalies. I, I will say this. Uh, the Ducks like to send a lot of right-handed shots who I think are at a disadvantage against a goaltender who has the blocker in his left hand and the catching glove in his right because the favorite corner is protected with the blocker. Well, they love this young man. Johnny Gaudreau will be the first shooter. A left-hander to approach Frederick Anderson. He slows it down and sneaks a five hole. That's the first time tonight he's gone slow. His hands weren't going slow. Uh, I'll tell you that much. Little bicycle kick. He pulls it to the backhand and just deftly slips it through the wickets. So Ryan Kessler for the Ducks. And he is below in Calgary from his 11 years in Vancouver, as you can tell. <laughs> Something tells me this just stirs it up for him. He approaches Hiller. Score! A beautiful shot by Kessler. It's about a foot and a half off the ice, and it's off the inside of the post, and nobody's going to stop this. Watch a little push forward here. little push right into the wheelhouse, and he just snaps it. Poodler got the goal scoring started for the Flames in the third, and he'll be the second shooter to approach Frederick Anderson. Ducks are 2-2 two and two in shootouts this season. The Flames are 1-1. One and one. Glove save Anderson, who seemed to know where Hoodler was going all along. Yeah, he did a beautiful job of staying with him. And watch the left hand of the goaltender here. Watch him show the left hand and then move it forward. When you push the hand forward, you protect against the puck being hoisted up into the top corner. So, smart stop by Freddie Anderson. Jacob Silverberg has been the Ducks' best shooter in shootouts this season. And it's another right-hand shot, as was Kessler. And he'll approach his former teammate, Jonas Hiller. Swings off the left side, lost the puck for a moment. And then as he got it back, he missed his shot. Yeah, tried to go over the glove. And it looked like that puck started to roll right about here. No, maybe not. He, he seemed to lose it a little bit earlier. 
Oh, it's a save. You know what, John, looking at it from that angle, Hiller actually gets his shoulder on the bit. So Monaghan, who's better than 50% in his short NHL career, will be the third shooter. And he'll swing way in off left wing. No, he won't. He weaves his way to Anderson and scores. He's got the curved stick out for that shot, let me tell you. And he uh, has all kinds of room inside the far post. And this is all up to Corey Perry now. Just his second shootout appearance of the year. And much like Kessler, highly popular here in Calgary. Another right-hand shooter, and he'll weave his way in on Hiller. Who misses the mark. Hiller defeats his former team tonight in Calgary. It took a shootout to do it, but the Flames win their third straight and their seventh in their last nine by a final count of 4-3. Anytime you get a comeback, come from behind win like Calgary got tonight, it's going to feel good inside that locker room. I don't know if Jonas Hiller got a little piece of that or if that caught a bit of the pipe, but Hiller celebrates. The Flames pay tribute to their fans. And this is going to be a, a sour flight to Vancouver, John. A, a game that the Ducks dominated for two periods and then allowed the Flames back in. Credit Calgary. They, they played a much better third period. Found a way to get two points out of this one tonight. The Ducks gave up only 19 shots in 65 minutes, but losing a shootout 4-3. Ducks live is next.